Allora, io adesso le battezzo con soprannome. Tu sei il franchino de americano del Testaccio, nel nome del Franchino. Franchino is my new name. Va bene. Ciao, 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 Stand. I'm in Rome. In my opinion, the most exciting place for pizza in Italy. I always thought of Italian pizza as the iconic Neapolitan style. Wood fired with the inflated crust, a little wet in the center, but as soon as I came to Rome, it totally opened my eyes. When in Rome for pizza, you have to try the two styles they're known for. Pizza Italia, which is rectangular and sold by weight, and Pizza Romana Tonda, round like a Neapolitan, but much thinner and crispier. The important thing about pizza here in Rome is that they have to be super thin and crispy. I'm gonna spend some time with Italia legend, Gabriella Bonci. This is my new bunch of boy, yeah? <laughs> Pizza innovator Stefano Caligari. Wow, I've never seen that before. Yeah. High-end chefs getting into the pizza game. Wow. Mm. And as always, eat a ton of pizza with some special characters. <laughs> First, I'm heading to Roscioli, one of the most legendary bakeries in Rome. This place is incredible. I think Roscioli may be my favorite place on earth. From the breads, to the pastries, to the pizza, it all looks so good. This fourth generation family business is run by baking legend Pierre Luigi. This bakery has been founded in 1824. What my uncle, my grand uncle did, we keep doing that. I'm meeting up with Pierre Luigi's head baker, Cesare. He came here to Rocioli four years ago from Canada. He's gonna give me a tour of the bakery and show me how to make some of their pizza. So what made you come out here? to work here. I was only supposed to do a two-week internship here. <laughs> Four years later. Like, for real. And now here during the day, uh, I run uh, the bakery. Okay. But I started off in the pizzeria. That's what I really came for, was for the pizza. If you want, I'm gonna I'll load up the, the mixer and we'll do a pizza dough. I would love that. <laughs> the pizza dough we make is super simple. Like, it's nothing complicated. This is 250 grams of unbleached sea salt. Because this, you have all your bacterias and enzymes that always help with the rise. So for this amount of flour, like the amount of yeast I'll put, just be like this wow. much. Oh my God. The last ingredient that uh, we use in our pizza dough, which a lot of places don't use, is milk. The sugars from the milk will give a more golden color, mm -hmm. and this will help break down the yeast. You don't see these mixes in the States. This looks like two hands. You have the double arms that make it seem like you're doing it by hand, right. right? Doing that, you strengthen your dough and you incorporate much more air. It makes the biggest difference. The thing is, is that I'll be doing this while I'm in there. I'll know when, when I have to put the water when I hear it slapping against the bowl. Right. It's <laughs> very rare for me to be here right now just standing, right. you know what I mean? Because you're here, you're answering the phone, you're arguing with someone <laughs> down in the store. Like, <laughs> You gotta use all your senses here to get the job done. I don't, I don't even have words to explain like how crazy it is to work here. 10 places at once, huh? So is this, is this the main pizza room? Is this where all the pizza's made? This is where we do all the pizza and then at nighttime they bake here. Okay. What is the history of, um, of, of Pierre Luigi, basically, your mentor? He comes from a family of like seven, eight generations of bakers. Wow. Like when they started here, it was, it was for real a mom and pop type place. Right. But then Pierre Luigi, as he grew up, he started learning and he made it something else, you know what I mean? So he came from a baking family, but he really became obsessed with Roman style baking and, uh, and uh, the history obs of baking. Obsessed is not even the word. It's almost an illness. <laughs> That's all of us, huh? This is what I came here for, is for this, pizza bianca. So this is it, this is ready to go. I'll just make sure that it's not sticking to the board. Right. Incredible, I've never seen this process. Wow, it bunches all up, huh? This is probably the most important part because this is when you'll find out if you're gonna put it in even or not. Talk about technique, this takes a real master. So this will go in, touch the back. Uh-huh, wow. Wow, wow. You just have to do it a thousand, like a thousand times and then maybe you get it. <laughs> so people are clear. 
This pizza does not go into the oven as big as it looks. This pizza goes in as a bunch, and then when it's in there, the pizza maker stretches it out as he brings the, the peel out. Incredible technique, it takes a master to do it. You cannot do this on your first try. So this is the pizza bianca. I just brushed olive oil on it, which is what we do when we take it out. But if you smell it, it smells almost fried. Oh my god. You know what I mean? The one thing that is just like kind of making me laugh is like, you know, after just coming from Napoli, uh, the way they treat the pizza, it's like, God forbid I touch the pizza in one way wrong, you know? Everyone started flipping out. You know, over here, it's like you guys just took the pizza out, cut it in half, put one on top of the other one, brush some olive oil on top. It's like so, so much here, more everyone's in a rush. Yeah. No one's got time for like fancy. Yeah, it's yeah. like, let's go, put it out. I got a bite. I got to go. I got yeah. shit to do. And now it's time to try some of Rosholi's famous pizza. My mouth is watering. This is your standard Roman breakfast right here. This is it, huh? Beer included. I love it. Maybe I need to move to Rome. So basically what we got here is the most classic of the classics of any Roman bakery. Pizza Bianca with mortadella, and the other classic is the pizza rossa, just with the raw tomato sauce and nothing else. It's so light and flaky. There you go. There's nothing better. Rosholi is obviously known for Pizza Italia, but in the past few years, Pier Luigi has been working with the other famous pizza style in Rome, Tonda. Grazie. Wow, yeah, totally, wow. The round, thin and crispy, distant cousin to the Neapolitan pizza. Emma, a newer Roman pizzeria, is just down the street. Pier Luigi created their dough recipe and brought me over for a nice little pizza lunch. You see, this is what is supposed to happen with Roman pizza. If you keep like this, it stays. It stays. It means that crunch and cotta. This is so good. I think this is the better pizza to feel the quality of the ingredients. Mm -hmm. Because the, the dough is so light and mm -hmm. that give you the chance to feel everything you put on top. Right, right, there's nothing masking it, there's nothing covering it up. Oh. Uh, mm. All over Italy right now, uh, the pizzeria are getting better with the service or with the wine list. And my idea is be honest. Make right. your own pizza, make with great ingredients, mm. be honest with your customer. Mm -hmm. Make the money to pay your employees right. and to have a good life. Right. But don't think that you save life or <laughs> right. you know you a can be surgeon. an astronaut. Yeah. <laughs> You're a pizza maker. I'm a bread baker. You right. Know, right. Relax. Yeah, that's a great philosophy to me. Cheers to you. Thank you so much for having me. The pizza scene in Rome wasn't always as refined as it is today. Fifteen years ago, Giancarlo Casa realized that pizza could be treated the same way as a dish at any other good restaurant with a focus on quality. He loves pizza, and he also loves cats. The cat to pizza ratio here is on point. Obviously, you're a cat lover. How did this become the name of your place? Avevamo un libro di storia di gatti a casa quando i figli erano piccoli, oggi sono grandi ormai, e c'era tantissime storie di gatti tra cui la favola della gatta mangiona. A cat that eats a lot. Greedy cat. What everyone tells us is that you helped rejuvenate pizza here in Rome. Nel 1999, quando noi abbiamo aperto, la concezione della pizza era differente. Gli ingredienti dovevano essere economici, non si guardava assolutamente alla qualità. Era un'opinione diffusa perché la pizza doveva per forza costare poco. La nostra mossa vincente è stata quella di portare la qualità sulla pizza i salumi, i formaggi, eh, su tutti gli ingredienti. Quello è stato il motivo per cui abbiamo avuto un successo abbastanza rapido. Ok, here they come. Wow. Grazie. That's beautiful. So how would you consider your style of pizza? Like uh, a mix from Roman and Napolitan. Right. Ni 90 Napolitan, 10 Roman. To me, the looks of it is very much like a Napoli style pizza. What would make it 10% Roman? A, a, a little bit of crunch. Okay. That remain. Okay. Wow, this looks incredible. Mm. 
<laughs> wow. The eggplant is so good. Oh, this is a, a very particular pizza. Wow, is that figs? I fichi di settembre, che sono i più dolci, yeah. marinati nell'olio al peperoncino. Mm. There's so much flavor. It's a balance between the sweet and the spicy. Yeah. It's really, really good. So how have you seen the landscape of pizza change here in Rome? Beh, il livello è aumentato molto. Assolutamente molto migliore oggi che, che 20, 30 anni fa. Non c'è proprio paragone. You've obviously influenced some of the biggest and most important yeah. uh, pizzerias in the, in the world right now. The pizza that you've done, it's unbelievable. So I'm standing outside of Spunko, one of Stefano Caligari's pizzerias in Rome. He's known for Trapezino, his pizza sandwiches that are kind of all over the world now. He's known for a cacio pepe pizza here at Spunko. It's made with ice cubes on top of the dough. I'm super excited to go inside and see the process. How many restaurants do you operate now in Rome? Now in Rome, I've got three pizzerias. Okay. Then Trapezino is something like uh, a dozen around wow. the world. Wow. Mm -hmm. When did you start? Like, what's your background in cooking? Just by my own, but just for fun. Mm -hmm. But I work into a beggar, uh -huh. you no know, making bread, but just selling. And then, uh, oh, uh, we don't have a pizza man tonight. Okay, I can do with my friends. <laughs> if you want, I can make some pizza. Wow. And I started like that. Cool. Then I studied a lot in Naples with friends, cool. because Naples is the patria. Right. You know? Right. So right. you just have to learn from there. Right. And then you find your way. Because of Caligari's deep understanding of classic Italian cuisine, he's able to build on that tradition and create something new. One of his most innovative creations is his cacio e pepe pizza, a play on the classic Roman pasta dish, which is composed of a few simple ingredients, black pepper, pecorino, and pasta. I've had it on a plate, but never on a pizza. He's going to flat the dough okay. and uh, put some ice cubes, and then I take and they cook in there. Wow, I've never seen that before. What are you trying to achieve with the ice cubes on the dough right now? It's because I need the um, wet surface of the pizza. Like uh, when you're eating uh, margarita, yes. uh, if with your knife uh, you get Rid of the tomato, right, right, right. yeah, you find a uh, white dough wet. Uh -huh. That's what I'm looking for I see. without any flavor. I see. I so see. I thought just water can give me th this, you know? I see. Well, it almost looks like there's a sauce on top, but it's just the water. How have you created such a large empire here in Rome and ar around the world? It's just because I like the things I do, right. I enjoy, you see? There's some Beautiful. water, and this is pecorino cheese with already some black pepper. Mm -hmm. and then also because I give you normal stuff, but in different uh, versions. It's something that his grandmother gave right. always. It's new, but yeah. it's like nostalgic in the same way. Yeah. Yes. When you eat, I want that you find the crunchiness at the bottom, the creamy in the middle, and the sandy uh, on the top black pepper on the table, so you can add, because I love cacio e pepe when it's black. Mm -hmm. Very hot, but I can't serve like that, otherwise everybody, hey! <laughs> but, look. Wow. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. You really get that pecorino. Very good. Very different than anything I've ever tried. Really interesting. Your friend. It's your cacio e pepe. Thank you. <laughs> this is something new. Cooking pizza with ice cubes on top. I've never seen that before. Mm -hmm. I'm in a relationship. I love my granita. I'm at Pizzarium in Rome, AKA Italio Heaven. Can I please have a slice of the potatoes? Yeah, we That looks delicious. Thank you. This is Gabriella Bonci's Pizza Dreamland. You can't talk about pizza in Rome without talking about Bonci. And his name came up a lot. Bonci is like, oh. We are friends always, but he is 
è, è un genio a 360 gradi. Bonci, diciamo che io, so, io sono cresciuto con i libri di Gabriele, quindi studiavo sui libri. Bonci, he has a chef background. He took all of these great toppings, stuff like the andouille, spreadable salami, potatoes, and put them on pizza. When he did it, people went crazy, and you could tell by the lines outside. From what I've heard, Bonchi is a larger-than-life character, and I can't believe that I'm going to get the chance to spend some time with him in his world-famous pizzeria. And to be honest, I'm kind of nervous. Hi, guys! <laughs> this is where all the magic happens back here. Yeah. And my Bonchi boys. Bonchi boys. Yes, my Bonchi boys. <laughs> Learn a lot from him, huh? Yes. Is this my friend? Okay. Is this Bangladesh? Yo Marshuna Kato. Bangla. A pito mai balobashi. The Bangladeshi national anthem. Number one, Bangla. <laughs> These guys have a lot of fun in this kitchen, that's for sure. I mean, there's so many different pizzas going on right now, I don't know which way to look. No other pizzeria in the world has toppings like this. Yeah. Look at the steak on that one. This is souple. Souple, see. So at the Roman pizzerias, it's not only about the pizza, it's about the fried goods as well. But in Rome, they're called souples, are very, very popular here. This is new style. No, no uh, rice, okay? Mm -hmm. No fried rice, just this spaghetti. Wow. It's very, very good. I mean, his brain works in a different way than most pizza men. This is innovation right here. Mm -mm -mm. Do you want to taste with me? Sure. The pizza? Yes. Yeah? Because. This is your woman. Oh, yeah, nice you and can. gentle. Wow. This is Telia. This is very important for the Roman style. Wow! Yeah, it's good, yeah? Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice, man. It's very nice. Yeah, thank you. Sausage, yeah. Come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, squeeze, squeeze. Uh, oregano. Calabria. Mozzarella cheese. This almost looks like uh, American style pizza with your sausage, your peppers, your oregano, and then your mozzarella. This is Italian style. Why well, American <laughs> style, yeah? <laughs> They're gonna rain. Hey, sir. Go. I feel like a bunchy boy. I feel yeah. like I'm part of the crew. This is my new bunchy boy, yeah? <laughs> How did this all happen? È successo perché perché volevo fare qualcosa qualcosa di diverso, a rendere nobile quello che che stavano distruggendo, cioè la qualità del pane, della pizza e, e fare lavorare tanti contadini, tante tante farm. Questo è stato il mio il mio obiettivo. Il mio cibo è semplicemente naturale. Bonji's approach to food has changed the pizza landscape in Rome. He's a real pizza idol. Thank you. And I'm even getting the chance to ride off into the sunset with him. Bye. Ciao. Ciao. In his smart car. Traditionally, the world of the chef and the pizzaiolo have been very separate. But people like Bonchi are blurring the lines. This new approach has inspired the next generation of chefs to look at pizza in a new light. Gabriele was actually the one that inspired me to apply this kind of philosophy to this um, pizzeria because Gabriele was born as a cook. Yes. He put on the pizza whatever, he whatever a cook would put. Right. And right. so I was inspired by that. Mm -hmm. That's why Giulietta was born. Amazing. Christina Bowerman is a Michelin starred chef who recently opened Giulietta, a pizzeria that does both Neapolitan and Roman style pizzas. Christina spent 16 years in the States as a lawyer, a graphic designer, and then finally a cook. She returned to Rome to cook professionally in 2004. This pizza is beautiful. It's like by far one of the most thought out and elevated looking pizzas that I've seen in Rome. That's awesome. What's on it? So basically what I did is that I did a flavor profile that it's really Italian. Zucchini into different shapes, so you have like a coolie. Mm -hmm. 
you spray a little bit of colatura di ricci, which is anchovy juice, basically yes. fermented. The Italian fish sauce. Exactly. And then you have anchovies that have been marinated, mm -hmm. and then the botarga, which is dried roe. And then we have the uh, zucchini that have been deep fried, so you have the crunchiness of the zucchini. Amazing. And thank you. I thought I was going to eat alone. <laughs> you don't let anybody eat alone. Thank you. This restaurant is like a temple to pizza. We wanted to have a place that was completely dedicated to pizza. It was very important to us that we would choose like the best ingredients. Those tomatoes. But more than anything else, the best pizzaioli. We consider pizzaioli experts in their field. They know what they're doing, they study every day. So I respect that. And in fact, I never, ever, ever enter into their world. The same way though, I think that what goes on top of the pizza is a cook's job. Right. Even in America, you know, being a pizzaiolo, being a pizza man, it was never a celebrated job. My father was like, you, sh you want to make pizza, you know? But now it's a celebrated job. It's a job that's elevated, like you said. Being here in Rome and having the chance to speak to a real chef about this culture is really helping open up my eyes. So thank you for inviting me in. Thank you so much for coming over I really here. appreciate it. I've eaten a lot of pizza and it's time for a drink. I'm meeting up with Giuseppe, a local DJ by the name of White Trash Banana for a drink at Bar San Calisto. This place is filled with characters. I've been around Rome a little bit, but this area that we're in seems unique. Mm -hmm. Where are we right now? Now we are in Trastevere. Ah. For me as a kid, it was like our city center. So yeah. you can hang out, have a drink, yeah. smoke. We, we were all like graffiti and stuff. Yeah. My friend is like, you're an Italian movie star, right? I know your face. You in movies? Si, Hannibal de Hannibal. Come fai a riconoscere? I knew it, I knew it. Ciao, buona volta. Ciao, grazie. Damn, well, this is Rome, huh? Yeah. <laughs> the pizzeria that we're going to after this, Rainbow, is that a, one of your favorites? Uh, I've never been there. We were talking about it yesterday, the guy I play with, uh -huh, uh -huh. and it's his favorite pizzeria. Really? So, okay. What good chance, you know, Why to go not? there. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, never been. Never been. <laughs> That was unbelievable. So we're done. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we're yeah, yeah. It's a wrap. We're going to eat you. <laughs> the Remo is a very famous Roman pizzeria, but it still feels like a local spot. This is a no frills place that serves honest and simple pizza. It says when it's crowded, it's like traffic control. <laughs> Lavoro da 31 anni che lavoro da Remo. Ma sai perché? Per... Questa qua è la meglio pizzeria di Roma, sai perché? Perché non è la differenza delle altre pizzerie, c'è sta camera che va là, te serve, io te vanno a fanculo, o sei marotto e cazzo, ma a fanculo uguale, e poi non parlo inglese, non parlo francese, non parlo spagnolo, se mi capisci bene, se no te va sempre a fanculo. I was trying to figure out like why this had such a like a familiar feeling to it, but it's almost like a diner in New York. Just like the lighting, you have the owner walking around talking to everybody. Do we go for pizza and we want something like fried? Yeah, a couple like fried. Like souffle. I go for margherita with bufala. Sounds good. Beautiful. <laughs> I love how he has the pair of glasses on, but then when we gave him the order, he had to put his other glasses <laughs> on to check. <laughs> so this pizzeria is fun. He's got the whistles, he's got four watches on, you know? So how much pizza you've been eating? You couldn't believe. But you don't get fat. You've I'm getting there, believe Yeah, me. you're getting Yeah. But the pizza here, it's different than in America. It doesn't it doesn't take as much on your body. Come you know? on, this one, look. It's, it's like, so thin. It doesn't sit as heavy, you know? You live in the dream as, as a 15-year-old kid. Yeah, exactly. Uh, right in the middle. Yeah. All right, buon appetito. Fuck, this one is 
good, man. Yeah. This is amazing. So good. It's so, so thin and crispy, you know? And you measure your touch, you. He said every time we drink, he needs to drink with us. Thank you. Cheers. Hello. I, I don't think it's because he likes us. Uh, it's because like this, there is less wine for us, you know. It's like it's you a, it sounds funny, but it's actually drinking your own wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> I love that. That's his trick. Every pizzeria needs a good character like that. You know what I mean? A good personality because this makes it more fun. A lot of restaurants here, they have like this kind of character inside. Sometimes it's too covered that the food is not that yeah. the best, yeah. you know? But here it's not like that. It's, it's the food you see, it's drink. real, you know? Yeah. It's real, man. Thank you so much for coming out and spending some time with us. Thank you. I spent my best hangover ever. I was totally <laughs> hangover today, drinking, eating pizza. I mean. Can't beat this? Yeah. Va bene. Va bene, grazie. Your pizza is delicious. Thank you for having us. Finita l'intervista, la, la fa culo. <laughs>